is the name of the Lord. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite those that can to stand up in reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord that is located in the book of Matthew. First book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 13. We're going to read only verse number 8. have the Bible. It's already there on the projection. Verse 8. Let us read together. Oh, let us read. Still other seed fell on good soil when it produced a crop. Uh, 160 on 30 times was what was sown. And the church may be seated. This word, it's a very well-known word among the Christian circles. It speaks of the parable of the sower. Jesus here, when he mentions this parable, Jesus speaks directly towards men. The religious of the time, they very upset with Jesus. They didn't want him to speak on the synagogues anymore, on the temple. They didn't want him to teach anymore. They didn't want him to bring any teaching, especially about the kingdom. And Jesus, on this day, he chose a different place in order to preach to the people. And then in other occasions, he used the temple again because nobody can prevent, nobody will prevent the word of the Lord from being spoken to men. The enemy, the more he, he tries, he cannot prevent that the prophets of God, that the word of the Lord, that the project of God is able to reach your heart and now here he goes goes to a city and now he was sitting near the sea he chooses a boat that was on the shore and he enters into this boat and from that point he begins to preach and he begins to preach about this parable He was not able to go into this, to the temple, but now he uses that scenery, that place, and there, that place becomes the temple of the Lord. And there, Jesus begins to speak about a man that had many seeds on his hand. And then he begins to sow the seed. And the word tells us that a few seeds fell on the side of the road where uh, the birds came and they ate the seeds. And part of the seeds fell in the middle of the rocks. And then they they grew, it germinated, but since the ground was filled with rocks, it, it quickly died. Because of the sun, the root could not go deep into the ground, and then it died. And there was um, a group of seeds that fell around the, uh, in the middle of the thorns, and the thorns grew, and the the seed was suffocated and there was a, another part that fell in 
onto um, good ground and there it gave good fruits and tonight we are going to speak about only this verse where it speaks of the good uh, good ground where it speaks about the seed when it was thrown on the place and since the the ground was appropriate because of the work that has had been done on the ground the seed remained and germinated and it gave fruit and Jesus later on explains what this parable meant for those who remained the ones that were, that were closest to Jesus they heard the explanation of the parable a few went away without understanding and Jesus began to explain the sower was was the father the seed is the word of the Lord it's, it is the Bible the, the ground here is man's heart and the good ground speaks of a good heart that received the word of God but you might ask yourself is there a good heart is there a person that can that can claim that he has a good heart is it there is there a person that can say that if we look at the children we will be able to say that they have good hearts if you get a child you may not know how this child is going to be in the future what the child thinks if you pick up a child of two three years of age has no even in his heart has no ha anger has no malice there is no bitterness when you see two children playing everything is fine they fight one hit the other <laughs> And the mother get very upset. The mothers, they hate each other. But the children, they don't mind. The mothers sometimes even create problems. The parents know, the fathers know, the pa fathers are different. But the mothers, when the children fight, when there is a fight with children, the mother enters the middle, there is a problem. If they don't intervene, everything is fine. Tomorrow, they will bring it, they will fight again. Tomorrow, they will hug again, they will play soccer together and children do this <coughs> the mothers they never forget that they get upset with the other mother not with the child they spend the rest of their lives hating <coughs> but the child the children they have good hearts one day Jesus said who does not turn into a child will not inherit the kingdom of God but it is interesting that as man grows it begin man begins to find the wor the life <coughs> this obedience enters into man's heart they begin to know between good and evil then the enemy uh, does the damage because then the sun comes and the trials does the of life and the, the rocks and everything that come the, the floods and the, the stomped ground on the side of the road it speaks exactly of it uh, it speaks of a heart as being stomped a heart as being mistreated a heart that was rejected a sad heart a heart filled with um, bitterness where the word of the Lord does not enter where the word of the Lord does not remain where the project of God does not remain because man he turns into all of it Th uh, after uh, as ta time passes by after 
the tiredness that the world brings, the disillusions and the frustrations, man's heart, it turns like this, suffocated with the thorns, hurt, and the people, many times, they 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 do this um, externally because they have a heart, wounded heart. They become bitter people without being able to forgive, without being able to f uh, accept forgiveness from anyone, even not even be able to forgive a relative. Many people are like this and live an entire life bitter with someone without having a conversation, without asking forgiveness. You have to pray and ask forgiveness. There are people like this. People there are suffocated. People that can no longer withstand. Youth. People live inside of their house with their parents. Youth living like this, suffocated. They want their space, right? They want freedom. And then when they are out there, they want uh, want to go back when they when they realize that out there is not a sea of roses out there is much harder than inside of their house and then they suffer you they are out there on the streets adolescents and drugs and and uh, vices abandoned by their parents abandoned by their relatives and many times without any option. <coughs> the family member doesn't have resources to treat them. They don't, their hearts are even shaking. They cannot withstand the suffering of their child and then they let go of them. That's all wrong. But there are people like this. Those hearts, this ground, this this land is the heart of man and we see this every day whatever you go through you find people like this but the word says here that Jesus spoke of a ground that was good there are people who with a good heart you know why because those are people that have been rescued by Jesus. Those are people that have been brought, uh, people that have been worked on, people that found a new life, people that had uh, an experience of salvation. Those are people that had an opportunity. But it was not an, an opportunity given by the world. Those were opportunities given by God because they discovered why they know they discovered a new kingdom. They discovered that there is someone that takes care of them and is concerned about their lives. And the word tells us that these people that when they receive the word of God they produced fruits because the word of God when it enters in man's heart God always operates something every time that you hear the word of God if your heart is prepared if you are inside of this spiritual context nobody will steal your blessing that's why tonight the Lord brought you here because He wants you to understand this there, there is an opportunity for you because one day this opportunity was available to us if we look to what we were if we look in inside of us we will realize that we were like this people that suffered, people that were rejected people that have been forsaken without any destiny, destination. But Jesus one day found us and He brought us 
inside of his shelter. He, saw, he brought us inside of his project. And now we're here. Today we are testimonies of the great power of God. Today we are testimony of the love of God. Because the love of God uh, is victorious in battles. Because the love of God can transform man's heart. The love of God can remove the rocks that are in man's heart. The love of God can remove the bitterness, the sadness, whatever it might be. There is uh, an opportunity for man. And for as long as Jesus is here preaching, and for as long as the Holy Spirit is upon the world, there is an opportunity for you. Sometimes you might think no, it doesn't exist. There is no way out. Sometimes you look to someone and remember a family member. You might think this person is no solution. There is no solution for this person. He tried everything. But Jesus, whatever he passed by, throughout his ministry on earth, whatever he passed by, Jesus always was able to reach men. Because he always went towards men. Jesus always rescued men. He always run toward ran toward men. He did with Peter. Remember Peter? A great friend of Jesus. He said, Jesus, whatever whatever you are, if I'm with you, nobody will touch you. Not here. And Jesus said, Peter, you deny me. And he said, no. He denied Jesus three times. He had been warned. But Jesus, when he resurrected, he sent a message to Peter. Tell Peter that I resurrected. Imagine, Jesus remembered Peter in the moment that nobody remembered. Not even Peter remembered. Not even Peter saw a solution for himself because when he saw Jesus passing by and he realized that Jesus knew that he had already denied Jesus, Peter at that instant, he had already abandoned everything. He was going back to his former life. He had not seen any solution for himself, but Jesus said, Tell Peter that I'm alive. Thomas, touch here, Thomas. You, are, uh, you don't believe? You're not believing? Touch my hand. Do you see the, the wounds? You see the holes? Touch on my side. It is real. And the prophecy was fulfilled. I'm alive, Thomas. And one day they brought uh, a woman to Jesus, a woman that was very had a uh, difficult life. Nobody wanted this profession this woman had. She was about to be stoned. She was being abused by men. She was being taken advantage by men. And they said, Jesus, this woman needs to be stoned. According to Law Moses, the people like this need to be stoned. What did Jesus do? He forgave her. Nobody threw the first stone. Who has no sin threw the first stone. You know what Jesus meant with that? He was saying, I'm greater than Moses. I'm greater than the law that Moses received from the Father long ago. I am. I am. I'm the one who spoke to Moses. Moses, speak with Pharaoh. The God I am sent you. Jesus is greater than the law of Moses. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Doctor of Doctors. My brother, you who entered here tonight, there is a solution for your life. Sometimes you are going through difficult moments. Sometimes you are living difficult moments in your, li in your life. It doesn't matter. If you entered here, it's because the Holy Spirit brought you here tonight. You know why? Because He wants to work on your life. The seed before it's sown, who has a farm, who works with this, who with, works with agronomy, 
knows that the land needs to be worked on and the Holy Spirit does this um, on man's life the Holy Spirit brought you here tonight Do you know why because he wants to soften your heart he wants to remove the hardness that is in your heart he wants to remove the anguish that is in your heart he will want to remove the suffering that you have been living in the pain that you are feeling because he wants that the seed of the Lord that word of a God to penetrate in your heart and that's why we came here tonight sometimes you feel like they, you have no solution for your life sometimes it happens a lot people lose pleasure in life they lose pleasure in their marriage in everything they feel like there is no solution but there is a solution, you know why? Because Jesus knows that you are good ground. Jesus knows that you have a good heart. And tonight he wants that the word of God remain in your heart. That's why we ca you came here tonight, for nothing else. You came so you can find out that there is a Father, there is a God that follow you, whatever you are, every day, and that you are never alone. And that in no moment in your life, from the day you were born, God already knew who you were. He knows your future. He knows your destiny. You just need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in your heart. If you allow God to speak with you, if you allow God to remove any bitterness, every thing that does not please God you will see that you are a chosen of God and tonight you will be a new creature in God in Jesus and you, you can produce fruits and you will produce fruit for the honor of God you will be a source of pride to your family you will be a source of pride to yourself because when the word of God enters into man's heart God transforms hearts God prepares men you know why? Not so you can give fruits to this life. No. This you will do. But what God wants is that you have an eternity. That you become a citizen of this eternal kingdom. And that's the message of this night. Tonight, God is inviting you. So you can stop being a earthly citizen to become a heavenly citizen. Do you want this? It is a simple message. It's a very simple message. A message, a uh, word is very well known by many. For sure, it's been preached many times, and there's nothing else to be said about this because it's a word so simple. But now, the responsibility is yours. The word now entered into your heart, and if you really want the blessing of God, if you want to carry this word, this fruit, this opportunity, you just need to say in your heart where you are, I want tonight to accept Jesus as the Savior of my life. That's it. You don't need to raise your hand. You don't need to come here in front. Where you are, you can tell, I want, I want Jesus as my Savior. Do this. Is an action of faith. You're not going to tell this to the Church of Maranatha. You don't need to tell this to the pastor. or You don't need to tell it to anybody else. Only to God. Because God knows you. And there are good people. You know why? Because Jesus transforms man. And if you want this blessing. As the group will sing a song. You will be speaking with the Lord. The more you speak with God, the better. But, but I don't know how to speak. I never prayed. It, it, it's not important. You just say, in the name of Jesus, I accept Jesus as my Savior. That's it. That's all. Amen. Let us close our eyes.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord to Jesus. We're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord because the hand of God has guided us to have victories in the presence of our, our, our God. Lord, we want to praise your name because you have blessed us. We've been uh, dry land with thorns, but one day you soften our heart. You transformed our lives. Exalted be the Lord. They transform the sinner and give salvation. They give the right to eternal life. We exalt your name because our days are counted to eternity. We exalt you, Lord, for your wonders among us in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'd like to invite the church to stand up. As we were praying for the service, the Lord sh has shown that tonight He is doing uh, a covenant with everyone here tonight, with many here tonight. The Lord is giving an awareness and an understanding of what it is to be an eternal citizen. Many thought that, oh, I don't want to change, I'm fine the way I am. The word tells us that we need to be like children. And being like children is to have a good heart. And having a good heart is to be like a fertile ground, is to be a good ground. The Holy Spirit needs to work in your life, in my life. In the same way that He, the Spirit needs to work on the life of many here tonight. And if that's what you want, if you want to go to heaven, if you want to receive salvation, Jesus, allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. And uh, how about my husband? It is you with God. And then through your life, God will save him. And then later, through your definition, through your seeking the Lord, through your definition God, God will save every one of your family members. Because the Word of God guarantees it, this. The prophecy of God guarantees this to us. But you need to have faith. And you need to live what the Word wants you to live. And the Lord also speaks of a woman that here is here tonight. She's living difficult moments. Uh, hardened heart. But tonight the Lord is transforming her heart. The water of the Spirit is irrigating your heart. And you leave this place replenished. You will leave this place renewed. You will leave this place filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Because this is what the Lord is doing. Amen. Amen.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Bessa is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Lord, tonight we praise your holy name. Because your presence is real among us in this place. We praise you, Lord, because we're privileged to be able to hear your voice, to be able to receive the comfort from your part, to be able to receive the ministration of the angels in our behalf. We praise you, Lord, because we have not lacked anything. Your hands. Oh, uh, we, and we know that they will continue to be upon your people to give us the victory to give us the guarantee and assurance that our names are written in the book of life Lord for us it has been enough but we ask you Lord that at this moment bring us home in peace under your peace and that your angels may go with us, Lord, and that we have a week of victories in your presence, and that your word may remain in the hearts, and that it might find a place to grow, and that it may give fruit for the, pray, for the honor of your name, that we may fight for our blessing, and that we may fight for our salvation and never look behind. Take us home in peace is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the spiritual gifts may be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen.
The church may be seated once again. If you want a prayer, an assistance, we are here at your disposal, the pastor and deacons and workers. You just need to raise your hand and ask someone or ask someone to raise their hand for you know, on your behalf. The church will remain in fellowship as the workers can now quickly give uh, start the assistance. That out. Can, let me just finish yeah, this. Go ahead, do it. Just give me a second. I'll check it out. I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> 